Today in the news, we got two unidentified GPUs, the craziest smartphone camera, in my opinion, and the unspeakable. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Before we start, let me give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, NordPass. It's a next gen password manager available for all of your devices. If you're tired of typing your password every time you visit a website, or are tired of having to come up with new and especially secure passwords for everything, NordPass has got you covered. Go get 50% off NordPass at nordpass.com boot, or use the code boot at checkout. It's only $2.49 a month, plus you get an additional month for free. Today's first story comes from Twitter user Rogame, which has been pretty on point so far with digging information from various benchmarking websites. Today, he brought us some insane Geekbench benchmarks of two mysterious NVIDIA GPUs. Now, I'm going to say it right now, these will definitely not be consumer level cards, but it is an indication as to where NVIDIA is going with this architecture. The first GPU is specced with an insane 118 SMs for a grand total of 7,500 150 CUDA cores and what we can assume is 24 gigabytes of memory. The second card has 108 SMs for 6,912 CUDA cores and 48 gigabytes of memory. I'm rounding up the memory here because what shows up on Geekbench is probably just the software not picking up the specs correctly. If we were to compare those to some of the best NVIDIA GPUs right now, notably the Quadro RTX 8000 and Tesla V100S, their core counts pale in comparison. Another thing that you can notice from these cards is the lower base clock compared to previous generation. And while we don't have the numbers for boost, we can assume that they are lower than previous gens given the actual Geekbench scores. In any case, we still don't know if this is Hopper or Ampere or even where these stand in the engineering sample roadmap since these scores and specs are from late last year. And as usual, with any of those leaks, caution is advised. Speaking of NVIDIA, the company seems to be absolutely laser focused on making their GDC appearance happen. Unfortunately, more companies are dropping out because of the banana Miley Cyrus you know what I mean. For the GDC, which is supposed to happen on the week of March 16th, a few companies have already pulled out with more pulling out as I'm writing the script. Not right now, like about an hour or two ago. Microsoft, Epic Games and Unity, Amazon, Sony, Facebook and EA are all companies that won't attend. Although some like Microsoft and Facebook will still have online presence. They will reschedule any major announcements though. As for Nvidia's GTC, the company said that it is still on track and that it will take precautions for the cabana in Cyprus. Speaking of a uh, first name Savannah, last name Harris, I wanted to take a second to just give out a piece of advice. If you were looking to buy a PC this year, I'd say right now is the best time. And I quite literally mean as soon as you can. Inventories are going to get slim. Memory prices were already planned to rise and this will just make it worse. The country in question has been seeing impacts in inventory and logistics. And while it seems to be slowing down there, it could also be the calm before the storm. If it persists, this will likely be like crypto mining for way more than just the GPU. So yeah, just my two cents. Next up, we got what could be the pinnacle of all smartphone cameras so far. It's the Vivo Apex 2020. Now the Apex is a concept phone, but Vivo usually ends up releasing phones that contain the same specs as their concepts. This phone has what they call an edgeless display, also called waterfall by other companies, nothing new there, but its most impressive parts are the cameras. The front facing one is under the display, which has been done before, but is still very impressive. On the back, you have a zoom camera, but this time with an optical zoom from 5 to 7.5x, and I mean a dynamic optical zoom. So far, all zoom cameras have had fixed lenses with digital zoom. And lastly, my favorite part is the other rear camera which has stabilization, meaning the camera can rotate on its socket to stay straight. This is much more effective compared to traditional stabilization because if the image stays straight, you can stabilize the panning later. It also has AI features like photobomb removal and 60 watt wireless charging which takes a 2000 milliamp hour battery to full charge in 20 minutes. 
Moving on to Intel, the company is doing more work to its graphic command center. They just released a new version of the beta that includes game broadcasting and video capture. I tried to download it because uh, the last beta was downloadable even if you had an AMD CPU, but it didn't work this time. No surprises there. If one of you guys records gameplay or streams and tries it out, send me a DM on Twitter about it. I'd love to see how it performs. And lastly, it's free game check time. Right now you can pick up Inner Space on the Epic Store for free until next Thursday, so don't hesitate and go add it to the library of games that you might never play. At least it's way better than those $1 lottery Steam keys that, that people used to buy. People equals me. Yeah, don't buy these, go get a free game. Anyways guys, that is pretty much it for the catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you got any comments or questions, you know where to put them. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here. Subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. I'm not rolling back there. Fine. Ow, my finger.